Hey guys, I'm Joe, this is Theo Joe Tech, and I wanted to talk about how exactly wireless charging works, specifically QI wireless charging, which I have in my phone and I use it every day. And I really wanted to explain what the physics behind this is because it's actually pretty simple. It might seem like magic, but the physics principles are something you would learn in any intro to physics course dealing with electromagnetism. So I'm gonna go over that today and you shouldn't have a problem understanding it. You should be pretty interested in it, I think. Basically, wireless charging usually takes advantage of something called electromagnetic induction. Now, by Faraday's law of induction, this basically says that when you take a loop of wire and put it into a changing magnetic field, then it induces a current in that wire. So with wireless charging, there's two parts. There's the base station and then the object or device being charged. Now, what happens is in the base station, there is a coil and it has an alternating current going through it. And because of this alternating current, any wire that has a current going through it has an electromagnetic field going around it. This is for any wire. So when the charging station has the current going through it, it's creating this electromagnetic field and because it's alternating current, it's going back and forth. So this is a changing magnetic field. Then on the phone side, you have another loop of wire, another coil. So then it is now in that changing magnetic field. And that's why you have to be pretty close to the charging station or else the magnetic field won't be strong enough. Once that device is in that magnetic field, the field induces another current into the device, which causes it to be able to charge. So at this point, you have a current going through the phone, and of course it is an AC current, so it has to be converted to DC first, which is more useful, but then you get that DC current, which can charge the battery. Now you might be wondering how the electricity passes from the charger to the phone if they don't make contact. How do the electrons get from one side to the other if there's no conductive material? Well, in reality, not a single electron passes from the charging station to the phone. So how does that make sense? How do you get the energy to store into the phone then? But you see, you don't have to transfer the electrons. They're already there as free electrons in the phone. They just need to be rearranged so they become useful. You see, after the alternating current is induced into the phone's coil, it gets converted into DC, which is more useful, by basically rerouting half of the alternating current into one direction. But all you have to know is that the alternating current is rerouted in such a way that it becomes a direct current. So instead of alternating, it goes in one single direction, just like as if you had plugged it into a charger into the wall where the wall alternating current gets converted into a direct current and is plugged into the phone directly. So it's the same idea. All you have to know is that by the time the current gets to the battery, it's in a single flow in a single direction as direct current. In your phone's battery, there's a lot of chemistry going on and that's really the source of the energy. When your phone is charged, there's an electric potential difference between one side of the battery and the other. And that just means that the electrons are on one side of the battery, which means they're happy. And on one side, they're not happy because they want to get to the other side. So when it's fully charged, they're in a place where it's not in equilibrium. The electrons want to get to the other side. So you have a lot of energy stored up because the electrons will just automatically go over to the other side if you let them. When you go to do something in the phone, which is anything really that requires energy, you're basically allowing the electrons to go from one side to the other. Eventually, as the battery dies, all the electrons have gone to the other side and they reach equilibrium, they're happy with where they are, and so you can't harness any more energy from them. But when you get a DC current, whether it's wired or wireless, you basically create a new electric potential in the reverse direction, which causes the electrons to wanna to go back to the other side. So that means when they get to the other side, they're useful again and they're stored. So you can see how it's not just that you're getting electrons just to be used up and they disappear, but rather you're getting energy from the movement of the electrons it's not like they just go away forever. They're just being rearranged so they become useful. So it really doesn't matter how you get the electrons to move from one side of the battery to the other. You can use it from plugging it directly into the wall and inducing it that way, or you can do it from a wireless charger. 
The effect is the same, you're creating an electric field which moves the electrons over. And where does the initial energy, not the electrons, but the energy come from? Well, it comes from the power station. What the power station does is it has basically what you can think of as pumps on the other side, which churn the electricity and the electrons back and forth. All they're doing is moving the electrons back and forth, and then you can harness that movement and redirect it into any of your devices, but none of the electrons are actually being transferred to stay into your devices. Your devices already have those free electrons stored up, they're just not in the right place. So that's where the energy from the wall comes from. You're not taking electrons out, you're just using the energy. I guess you can kind of think of this analogy. Think of a grandfather clock where the energy is stored really in the position of the weights. So as you pull down on a lever using your muscles energy, the weights get higher up into the clock, in the body of the clock, and they want to go lower. They want to go from the higher potential, which is higher up, to lower potential near the ground. But obviously they can't just drop down because you're holding it back to be used as energy to swing the pendulum. So it's kind of like the electrons, which can be reused and stored on one side of the battery until they're transferred to the other and used up. It's not like you're using up the weights as they drop to the bottom, you can put them back. So that's kind of how you can think of it. Like the weights are like the electrons and they can be reused as long as you have external energy, whether it's your muscle putting the weights up against gravity or it's the power station, which creates electromagnetic field to push the electrons back across the battery. And that's why you don't need a physical connection between the power source and the device because no actual electrons are transferred, the energy is. So I hope I explained that in a way that made sense and was interesting to you guys. So I wanna know what you guys think. If this made sense at all, let me know in the comment section and give it a like so I know you guys actually enjoyed it. If you wanna continue watching, I've got some other videos on the right hand side. You can either click on them right on the video or look in the description for the same link like if you're on a phone. If you wanna subscribe, I make new videos three times a week, so I think it should be worth it. And I'm gonna look forward to hearing from you guys, either on Twitter or in the comments section. So thanks for watching, guys. I will see you next time. Have a good one.